Welcome everybody. I want to call call this meeting to order. The mayor, the board of mayor and alderman, September 6, 2016 regular meeting. Uh, I determined that we have a quorum. I got the prayer. Vice Mayor Green's got the pledge of allegiance. Please stand for the prayer. Gotcha. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we stand before you with humble hearts. Thank you for giving us your Son, Jesus, and the freedom that we all enjoy in this great country. Look over and keep all the fine men and women safe that is serving this great nation and their families here and around the world. We pray for peace and your blessing. Our prayers go out to the Orr and the Cooper family for their loss. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> we need to prove our minutes uh, for, for August 4th, 2016 regular meeting. I need a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hear no nays. All favor. The minutes passed. Uh, we're moving on down to number two. That's department reports. Fire, Ricky. <coughs> Mayor, Alderman, for the month of August 2016, we had a total of 271 calls. Consisted of three structure fires, 26 fire alarms, one vehicle fire, two grass fires, five hazardous materials calls, 27 motor vehicle accidents, 190 medical calls, three canceled in route, 14 miscellaneous. <clears throat> to date, we've, had, we've uh, refurbished 650 hydrants and uh, completed 11 fire inspections in the month of August. The average response time for the month of August 2016 was 3.3 minutes, and total water consumption for the same month was 37,000 gallons. We, uh, we've got a little event that's going on at the Chili's this Thursday night from five to eight uh, to benefit St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Uh, myself and a couple of the other firefighters will be there. Uh, Lord, I really regret doing this, but uh, we will be there waiting tables in order to take our tips to give to help St. Jude's Hospital. So anybody that uh, would like to come out and uh, heckle us a little bit and have a good time with us dropping your food, uh, feel free to do so at the Chili's, like I said, on Thursday night at Sam Ridley from uh, 5 to 8. Any questions? The beer and well, they won't let us touch the alcohol. That was the first thing they told us. So I can go figure, you know. But <coughs> any questions? What about the smoke detector program? Uh, it's going along as well. If you look, and I don't read through this whole packet because you can see uh, Chief Clark loves to type. He likes pictures a little bit, but he likes to type more. Uh, to date, we've put 44 uh, new smoke detectors in homes through the state program, and those are free to the homeowners, you, you can call. Uh, Lieutenant McCormick handles that program for us through the, through the fire department for the state of Tennessee. They're 10 year detectors. Uh, you, can call, uh, you can call our station too, which is listed on our website. Uh, get a hold of the station, they'll take your address down. Uh, the only requirement is, is that the fire department has to install the detector for you. Uh, but like I said, if you need two or you need three in your home, we put as many as is adequate for your residents. Uh, in for you, uh, and they are 10 year detectors. They're the new good detectors. But up to date, we've put 44 new detectors in homes that did not have any. Thank you. Richard. Any other questions? Thank you. Move it on to police. Chief Walker. <coughs> Vice Mayor Alderman. 
the uh, calls for service this year, as I've talked about before, uh, have increased. That gives you a listing by the 10 codes we use for each call for service of what actually comes in. That doesn't mean that they wind up being that in the long run, but uh, it, you've got the first sheet there should be 2015 of August and the second one should be August of this year. And what you'll see between those two is uh, last year in August, we had 2,406 calls for service. This year, that increased to 3,077, uh, which is a 27.8% increase. And then as you go on over, if you start looking at the calls for service by time of day and day of week, um, you'll notice that so far, uh, calendar year today through the 31st of August, last year to this year the calls for service have increased 38 percent so far far this year and i didn't get a chance to get the charts and graphs done in time to get it to bruce uh, so they're not in your package but i will email those uh, to everyone at the table so you have it but it kind of shows specifically uh, when you start putting it in colors and putting it in pictures what it looks like Next. There you go. That's the dashboard that we get from TBI's website. We couldn't get into it until today either. But it kind of indicates what the prior uh, 12 months look like. Actually, it goes about uh, 13 months because it's July last year into August of this year. And as you can see, the, the number of offensive that have been reported have held their own all the way through. And of course, if you've got increased calls for service, you're gonna have increased offenses as well that are reported. The total offenses through the first eight months this year that we reported were 1,477 compared to 1,332 for the same period of last year or about 10.9% increase overall. Now, there are some interesting things that actually show up when you start digging into some of those. And as has been a history here in Laverne, um, in our total crimes against persons, they're broken out crimes against persons, crimes against property, and then crimes against society. And the persons are things like murder, negligent manslaughter, negligent vehicle vehicular manslaughter, kidnapping, forcible rape, forcible sodomy, et cetera, et cetera. And we also have our domestic violence related incidents. So far this year, we've had 260 out of the 452 crimes against persons. That's a 58% grouping of all of our crimes against persons. Uh, just three weeks ago, we arrested a man that uh, we charged with a specially aggravated uh, child sexual uh, crimes. And um, that child's 15, this started when she was 12. The next day, we had a crime that involved two juveniles, but it was 16 and 12, the victim being 12. And then the very next day after that, Department of Children Services referred four more cases to us that our detectives began investigating. That's going on across this country, it's not just here and you hear so much about human trafficking, it's real, we've had it here. We find most of our human trafficking down near the interstate, naturally, but uh, it's also happened in other areas. Uh, we're seeing a tremendous increase in our opioid abuse. It's all across the country. We've seen an increase in the responses, medical calls of people not breathing, people not alert involving opioid use. Um, week before last, we took down two pounds of good grade weed 
marijuana. That's not unusual. What was unusual is we also got four ounces of heroin that was laced with fentanyl. And fentanyl's what's killing people. Uh, we've had several that uh, when EMS got there, the Narcan brought them back. We've also had a few too that it didn't, it was too late, too little, too late because we didn't get there in time. There's a tremendous problem across our country with synthetic drugs. We have those same issues here. When we have those issues, we see people um, who do things they normally don't do and see things they normally don't see. They also hear things. They commit crimes, very serious person-to-person uh, -person crimes, and they also kill themselves. Um, that's going on everywhere. Everybody, every which way we turn, there's something happening. I had the opportunity last week, uh, I was invited or asked to come and assist with the debriefing for the public safety folks in Maribel, uh, where they buried the young man last week. And it is a mind opener, it reminds us this was a man in his late 40s who was threatening to kill and that was armed and was going after his dad. It had started as a domestic that morning, but there was nothing there they had where they could charge the man. And later on, he went out and bought ammunition and came back and had his pistol and his wife and two children got away. She called the police and by the time the deputy and the Maryville officer were riding together, got there, they were able to get the dad and get him to safety. And as a Maryville officer looked around the vehicle just to get a quick glance at him, uh, he fired around just at the right time, hit his collarbone, got his juggler, and then hit his spine. Um, so there was no hope, no chance. And those things are going on all across our country every day. One of the things we do have in Laverne, though, that I'm very proud to say is we've had group after group after group come into the police department, sending cards, writing cards, um, bringing little bags that are uh, care packages with lifesavers and mints and things of that nature, all the way up to homemade brownies from a youth group, one of the church's uh, food. Uh, we get plenty of power rings. Now, a power ring, in case you don't know, is normally called a donut. Now, I'm a power ring expert because I've been doing this over 40 years. So I'm an expert at power rings. But uh, we appreciate all the folks in our community and the response we've had from them and the support they've given us. Any questions? A uh, fleet of new police cars out back you know when they're going to actually hit the road? There are already some of them on the road. We're having to wait until we get some finalized equipment in the last two before they go to the road. I will tell you this, when I went to Maryville, um, I checked my mileage all the way up there and back, and I got 23.6 miles per gallon. That's unheard of in a law enforcement patrol vehicle. So. Uh, they won't get that good of gas mileage in the city, but they will get pretty good gas mileage for the most part. The other day I met with the mayors in Rufford County <clears throat> plus the Shelbyville and Bedford County mayor, and they were saying that a lot of them were still running the old Crown Victorias. And, and they're, they're talking about the gas, how much gas that the Crown Victorias uses versus the, the newer That's correct. Uh, patrol cars. That's correct. We only have one patrol car left that's Crown Vic, and that's a 2010 model. And that was one we got to replace a charger that didn't float during the uh, May 2010 mm -hmm. flood. And that's the only one we have left uh, that we're using marked in the fleet. The rest of them are way over 100,000 and are already gone. We got, a, got one that's uh, unmarked and it's about ready to go too. It's about only its last leg as well. But um, since FY 1314, uh, we looked at the other day, 45 vehicles have been purchased for uh, 
the Laverne Police Department fleet and Garland has in his budget the Police Department fleet maintenance uh, monies and that has drastically decreased since the fleet has been refreshed because we were at a terrible point where we were towing some vehicles twice a week and doing major repairs on them. So, and I also encourage shape. anybody to take that police academy that I took last year. CPA, uh, Citizens Police about, Academy, about and uh, Miss Rachel will be doing a, a release on that pretty soon. As soon as Shree gets back out of the staff and command, it will start. So anybody that's interested needs to let us know. We'll get them the application, or they can pick one up at the police department. We'd love to have them. I know, I, I know I've, I learned a lot, and uh, we've got a, some, great, some great people over there. We need to get I you to come it. back, though. We tried to get you to let us show you how that taser worked, and you wouldn't let us. <laughs> Might try that next year. Okay. okay. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Moving on down to uh, Codes, uh, Randolph. I see... I, Randolph, I still see you totally. You, yeah, I'm, you, you're a paper. I've changed my ways. <laughs> <coughs> Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman. The monthly report for two, August 2016 is as follows. For single family dwellings, there were 12 permits issued at a valuation of 1.8 million. There were eight commercial permits issued at a value of 6.8 million. Uh, seven miscellaneous permits, six signs, and five grading permits. There were six others to include additions and remodels. Um, total number of permits for the month were 44, valued at $8.7 million investment to this community. Plumbing permits, there were 14 single family dwelling permits issued. There were four commercial plumbing permits issued. Mechanical permits, there were 14 single family dwelling permits issued and five commercial. Complaints for the month were 152 for tall grass, 57 for junk cars in the yard, and 93 others. Building inspections for the month were 227. Our impact fees, the monthly revenue with impact fees uh, for the month was 61377.56. Year-to-date totals are 639,524. Total number of single-family permits issued year-to-date have been 93. The total number of single-family permits issued during the same time period last year were 72. Total number of all permits this year to date are 376. Well, Randolph, I want to thank y'all at the Coast Department. Y'all have really stepped up the plate with all the, everywhere you look in Laverne. Something's coming out of the ground. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know y that keeps y'all busy. It does. But we have more. Come take a look outside. Development. My, come take a look one outside. One month my now than we, a few years ago, we had all year. And y'all mm -hmm. do a great job keeping up with all that. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your comments. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Moving on to Park and Rec Department, A.C. Davis. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman. There are numbers for the month. Uh, we've been extremely busy and going to continue to be extremely busy with all the stuff we have coming up. Um, a couple of our meetings, we have a Parks and Rec Advisory Workshop coming up on the 19th, and then we have a Senior Citizens Advisory Committee meeting on September 15th. Uh, some of our upcoming events or past events, we had the uh, Play for Tay tournament this past weekend, and it was outstanding. The weather cooperated, and... and uh, Everybody had a really good time, and I haven't s spoke with uh, in anybody about the how successful financially it was, but I suspect that it did really well. Um, we have the carnival coming into town on September 14th. Hopefully, it'll be up and running then, and it'll run through the 17th. And, of course, we have Old Timers Festival on the 17th. And then uh, we actually have the Howl at the Moon coming up on October 15th, and Severin Trent, who is so gracious to sponsor us out every year so we've kind of named that race after them since they always contribute so much to us and then we're going to try to do the trail of treats on uh, october 22nd and also we're going to try to uh do a drive-in movie that night as well we still don't know what the movie is going to be yet that's still to be determined but uh we've done uh 
a few projects around here. We did a remodel on uh, April's office and uh, your new office, Mayor. So we should be, your, well, <laughs> no, because closets don't have windows. So that's right, that's it right. might be the same size, but it's still. Uh, but <clears throat> then uh, we're gonna, we've re rebuilt three backflows and uh, replaced the countertop and range top down at the senior center with, uh, with a brand new cooktop, which was donated by our uh, maintenance supervisor, David McGowan. So uh, that's all I have, any questions? Each time y'all move me out of one office, it, it, it's, it's half the size of the one before. The only thing left is the outhouse now. <laughs> well, we might have to contract that one out. <laughs> I don't want to get to that. <laughs> Thank you, AC. Right. Uh, finance, Phyllis. Good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Alderman. Uh, we are freshly into our new year. Uh, the report this month is for the month ending in July. For the general fund, uh, expenses have exceeded revenues by approximately 540000 That's typical this time of the year. We get the bulk of our revenues in uh, later in the year when property taxes start coming in. Uh, local sales tax, we uh, for the month of July, we collected almost $522,000. That's uh, $63,000 better than what we budgeted for um, July and about $6,000 better than uh, prior year. Um, State Street A revenues have exceeded expenditures by approximately $64,000. Stormwater revenues exceeded expenditures by approximately $44,000. And in our water sewer fund, revenues exceeded expenditures for approximately 368000 The second page is uh, balances in our bank accounts. And the third page is a comparison to prior year. Uh, in the general fund, uh, revenues are down approximately 151000 uh, Expenses are up about 47000 In the water sewer fund, revenues are up about 76000 and uh, expenses are up about 13000 and tap fees are down actually about 17000 Any questions? Questions. Phyllis, I got a lot of calls in the last two or three weeks about the last month meeting. Uh, you spoke about the deficit last month report on general fund equipment for the fire department. Did we purchase the equipment with bond money? Can you explain that? Yeah, uh, we did not have a deficit. Um, I think what you're referring to is the comparison uh, to prior year. On um, the comparison sheet, um, it shows our revenues down and our expenses up. The revenues were down this year over the prior year because the prior year we had a bond issue that paid for the fire equipment. The fire equipment was paid for a bond. It wasn't donated, it wasn't a grant. Uh, we did have a small grant for some equipment for the fire department, which included a generator, some um, turnout gear and a, a commercial washer and dryer, but no, sir, we do not have a deficit. In the general fund doing 2015, 2016. The general fund is doing very well. I think you're going to be very pleased when we get the report from the auditors. They should have a presentation probably in December, but general fund has done really well this year. Thank you. Bruce. Thank you. Moving on okay. to library. Donna's not here. No one's going to do library, so we'll move on. A water treatment, uh, Thomas. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman, Bruce. What we have is our monthly report for the month of July of this year. An interesting cover picture there. That's during July, and that's what can eat up 12 tomato plants in about two days. That was at, at my house. <laughs> but uh, the water plant during the month of July delivered uh, 130 million point five gallons. Of that, it was 1.5 million from the reclaim system. Uh, during the month of July and, and August, the lagoon and the membrane unit are going through a lot of maintenance parts. Uh, some of it's kind of old and just showing its age, so we're, we're catching it up and finding more things as we get a little further into it, but it should be up and running really soon. Uh, rainfall for the month was at six, 0.28 inches, so that still leaves us about four inches behind for the year. So we're, we're slowly catching up. The lake's keeping its level, and that, uh, that keeps us in good shape. Everything was in compliance for the month. Uh, our flushing team had a big month. They got 65 sites and flushed about 1.7 million gallons just to, to freshen up the chemical levels and the, I mean, the chlorine levels, even them out and any sediment that might have gotten into the lines. Um, 
during the month of July, there was two fixed line samples approved from the distribution department. Uh, which they don't always like to hear, but they were good. Maintenance for the month, um, we got one really highlight in there about the approximate number of walks. I think it was higher than that. I guess we have the perfect element there. We had the moisture, the heat, everything, the mud. So they just really were out in July. We killed, I don't know how many wasps. Uh, customer service for the month, we had uh, six quality calls, four pressure complaints, one taste note, one appearance. So it was very minor. Our maintenance for the year, we're at the halfway point. So we're a little bit over for the first half, uh, just looking at any big expenses that might come during the second half. But we're pretty much on schedule with that. Our training for the month was um, fire hazard safety. <laughs> um, we're fully staffed. We have one operator that's out on long-term disability, should be returning hopefully soon. Uh, but it's really about all we have for the month. Any further questions for Thomas? Thank you, Thomas. Moving on down to uh, <coughs> Public Works, Garland Russell. Good afternoon, Mayor and Alderman. This will be for the month of August. Uh, been pretty busy with the brush removal. I think we about got caught up. We had a total of 163,380 pounds, with 518 hours in the workhouse program, with 149 work orders for the month, with 31 hours of overtime and five and a half on call. For the fleet department, we had a total of 37 repairs, 32 in in-house. Put six out, 31 oil changes, and we put on about eight sets of tires, uh, 34 equipment repair, which will be lawnmowers, tractors, backhoes, whatever, with 19 half hours of time. Any questions? Any questions for Garland? I've, I've got a lot of good comments on the way that uh, the, the, uh, the, the brush has been picked up. Some people show been uh, Thank you. Tell me to thank y'all about the job y'all done, and, it, and it's been in the real hot weather. With the Everybody's holiday. been pretty satisfied, uh, and that's usually a, the part, a section that I get most complaints on. But people have been real pleased about the, the job y'all been doing with the brush, because I know if the truck was broke down, it, it got behind, but y'all just about ready to get caught up. It was just with all the storms we had came through, we were still picking up from that, but it's not as much out there as it was. Thank you. Thank you, Carter. <coughs> Moving to the utility department, that's Michael Deeks. Mayor Alderman, good afternoon. For the month of August 2016, the water department, we had a total number of work orders of 141. <coughs> New meter sets was 15. Answered 146 Tennessee one calls. We had three mainline breaks, which two of those came after hours. Uh, one of them did come in about 5 o'clock in the morning, shortly before we uh, got to work. <clears throat> I wanted to touch base on that for just a minute. Uh, we did receive some complaints about us being out at 2 o'clock in, in the morning making repairs. Uh, we don't want to be out there at 2 o'clock in the morning, I can assure you that. Uh, so we, don't, we can't schedule those things. We don't plan when they break. Uh, it's our job to get out there and make sure everybody's got clean water to take a bath and, and get cleaned up for work the next morning. Uh, service lines breaks was 30. Gallons of water not sold was roughly over 661,000 gallons for the month. Uh, about 600,000 gallons of that was where we had to take the Sanders tank down for the one-year inspection from the project, and I believe Jamie spoke on that at the workshop Thursday night. Uh, valve inspections and repairs for the month were 90. Fire hydrant inspections were 187 with a total of 72 and a half overtime. Uh, the sewer department, we had a total number of work orders of 137. Service calls were 96. Pump stations were 41. Final grinder pump inspections for the month were two. Manhole inspections and pressure washing sewer lines were 82 for the month. We rebuilt 12 grinder pumps in-house with a total of 75 hours overtime in the sewer department. Uh, busy month, but very productive. <coughs> Any questions for Michael? I live on one of the streets of the main water. I'm really thankful I got to take a shower that morning, so I thank you. Thank you, ma'am. For being up in the middle of the night. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Michael. 
and down to Human Resources, Cheryl. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor Alderman. Here is the report for Human Resources for the month of August. We had two external jobs posted with 12 applicants, one actual new hire, two internal jobs posted with four applicants, one re resignation, zero terminations, seven workers' compensation claims, four liability claims, 129 care here appointments, two no-shows, there are 329 lives covered as far as care here enrollment. Eight HRAs were conducted for a total claim dollar amount of $316,958. Are there any questions? Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. So we're down to old business. Second reading ordinance 2016-08, an ordinance to amend the city of Laverne zoning ordinance by changing the official zoning map for tax map 14, parcel 40, consisting of 9.19 acres, located Sand Hill Road near intersection of Fergus Road from a R2 minimum density residential zoning district to a PDR plan district <coughs> residential zoning district with a R2 minimum density residential zoning and C3 neighborhood service commercial zoning received a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on June 28, 2016. I don't think I ever wrote, read any ordinance that had any more or less zonings on it, but uh, this was spoke about in workshop and we had a public hearing on it. Need a motion to approve or deny. Need a motion to approve, deny. Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Need a second. <coughs> a second. Got a second. Any discussion? Yeah, I have a couple questions or comments. Um, that is a very dangerous corner there. Um, was there any talk at planning at all about uh, potentially with impact fees or whatever we're going to do, stoplight, anything else? Because where you come out of Sand Hill there is uh, it's pretty dangerous, and, and some of the residents have brought it up as well. Um, so I guess that's my first question. And Kyle? No, nothing was discussed at planning as far as road improvements. I, I think that would come. If this was approved, it would come at the concept phase. Um, Planning Commission more than likely at that point would ask for a traffic study and, and, and go from there. Okay. And the only thing that's really changing is just basically the C3 part. I mean, right now, um, I know it's going to a PDR, but basically uh, R2 homes could go in there right now. The only part is the C3, whatever would, that would fit into that zone zoning. Is that basically the all that's changing with this? Per, pretty much. I mean, the R2, I think, is a little bit tighter. Since it's a PDR, there's a little bit, maybe smaller lots because you've got the open space and things like that. So there is some, a little bit of difference. That, that piece of property has been laying there for years. It's been talk of, of different things going in there. There's these apartments and condos. So, you know, this is, this is probably the uh, less of the three evils going with R2 than apartments and condos. It's already zoned R2. If, to go with apartments or condos, they'd have to rezone it to rezone R3. It right. But it's already zoned for R2. We're not changing that. Only thing we add, we, we added is the, is the little commercial on the PDR, right? The, the PDR restriction, which is the design booklet, or it should be in your packet, and, and then the uh, C3 portion. Then it went in construction phase, and that's when we do the traffic study and uh, stuff that's, like that's that. That's when we would usually ask for the traffic study as a concept plan phase. Okay. Only other piece of commercial right near there is Dollar General. <coughs> I believe so, and I believe it's C3.
Any further questions? We got a motion, got a second. <coughs> Do a roll call. Alderman Broker? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Uh, second reading ordinance 2016-08 passes five to zero. Moving down number four. This is also a second reading the ordinance 2016-10, an ordinance to amend the 2015-2016 physical year general fund budget. We spoke about this in workshop. Um, need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve, need a second? I second. Any discussion? Alderman Brown? Aye. Alderman Broker? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Ordinance 2016-10 passes five to zero. <coughs> Second reading ordinance 2016-11, an ordinance to amend the 2016-2017 fiscal year <coughs> general fund budget. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. Got approved. Got a motion to approve. Need a second. I second. Got a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Alderman Jones. Aye. Alderman Brown. Aye. Alderman Broker. Aye. Vice Mayor Green. Aye. I say aye. Ordinance 2016-11 passes five to zero. Number six, second reading ordinance 2016-12 as an ordinance to amend the city of Laverne zoning ordinance by changing the official zoning map for the tax map 15M, group F, parcel seven, consisting of 2.2 acres located at 5227 Murfreesboro Road from a C1 government used commercial zoning district to a C2 Highway Service Commercial Zoning District. District. It received an unfavorable recommendation from the Planning Commission back on July 26, 2016. Excuse me. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. I need a second. A second. second. Got a second. Any discussion? Alderman Broker. Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Ordinance 2016-12 passes five to zero. Number seven, a motion to approve a proposal for a baseball softball league operation. Uh, I think everybody has discussed this with different people. Need a motion to approve or deny. I make the motion to reject all proposals and start over. That's my, that's my motion. Second. Got a second. Any discussion? Alderman Brown? Aye. Alderman Broker? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. The, uh, Proposal to reject all proposals and start over passes five to zero. We're down to consent agenda. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. A motion to approve. Need a second? Second. Second. Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Alderman Broker? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. The consent agenda passes five to zero. We're down to new business. First reading, ordinance 2016-13, ordinance to amend the city of Laverne zoning ordinance by changing the official zoning map for tax map 14, parcel 46.01, consisting of 28 acres. Mouse State Drive. Located near the intersection of Minerva Drive and Money Street. 
from a I-1 light industrial zoning district to a R-2, a low density residential zoning district, received a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on August 30th, 2016. Need a motion to approve or deny. Excuse me, sir. Um, it's, a, it's changing to an R-1. Okay, R-1, I'm sorry. It's okay. Let me start over with clear. Ordinance to amend the City of Laverne Zoning Ordinance to, by changing the official zoning map for tax map 14, partial 46.01, consisting of 28 acres, located near the intersection of Minerva Drive and Money Street from a I-1 light industrial zoning district to a R-1 low density residential district received a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission. Thank you for clarifying that. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Need a second? A second. Got a second. Any discussion? Alderman Broker? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Ordinance 2016-13 passes five to zero. Number 10, a resolution 2016-22, a resolution of the City of Laverne, Board of Mayor and Alderman to declare certain property owned by the city to be surplus to the city needs and directed disposal of the same. Need a, need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> Alderman Broker? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Res uh, resolution 2016-22 passes five to zero. Number 11. A resolution 2016-23, a resolution to accept Pinnacle Point Subdivision Phase 2. Received a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on August 30th, 2016. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Need a second? Okay. Any discussion? Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Alderman Broker? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Resolution 2016-23 passes five to zero. <coughs> Number 12, motion to approve an agreement with Wesley and Shirley Winfrey for the sewer connection at 170 Cherokee Drive. Need a motion to approve or deny this motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Need a second? Second. A second. Any questions? <coughs> Alderman Broker? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. This motion uh, is uh, approved five to zero. Number 13. A motion to approve an employment agreement between the City of Laverne and the Assistant City Administrator, Kyle Brown. Get a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. A motion to approve. Did a second? I second. Any questions? I'll make one question. This City Administrator's job, uh, any, I, any city that's got any kind of administration, uh, it, it's customary to, to, to give a contract. Um, if you're going to have a good em employment, uh, we're going to do a, 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 a rate study on in, in, a, in a few months, and uh, that's just one part of, uh, you know, getting good employees and keeping good employees. In uh, a motion. Well, let me let me just go in there too, because um, I know it was brought up at, at uh, citizens' comments. I think if any job, and, and uh, Bruce and I have spoken of this, Bruce's job is, is as a contract as well. 
but uh, we have a valuable employee, as of all of our, our employees are valuable. Um, but at any given time, another administration could come in and say, hey, we don't need an assistant city administrator. At which time, he's kind of stuck his neck out on the line a little bit to take this job. He was at the city, city engineer for several years. He could have stayed there. So I, I do believe it's warranted in this case um, because I think it can be viewed as uh, down the road by another administration is not necessary, and, and uh, at, the, at which point he would be he would be out of luck. And uh, so I do think it is it is warranted here. In a motion to approve or deny? We've made that already. Mm -hmm. You've got a motion and a okay. second already. Okay, done, done, that. We we'll just need to vote. Okay. Autumn Autumn Brown. Aye. Autumn Broker. Aye. Autumn Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Green. I say aye. The motion passes five to zero. Congratulations, Kyle. Number 15, a motion to approve the settlement agreement. Mayor, <coughs> skip number 14. Did I do? I thought I'd done 14. Mo oh, number 14, a, a motion to approve a, a memorandum of understanding with the city of Murfreesboro and Rufford County regarding the solid waste disposal feasibility study. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. A motion to approve. Need a second? I second. Got a second. Any discussion? I know we had the, the guy at the workshop come in and, and explain this at length. Excuse me. I need a motion to approve or deny? Huh? We have the motion to second. Ready I'm done that again. Ready for the vote. Yes. Ready for the vote. <laughs> Alderman Jones. Aye. Alderman Brown. Aye. Alderman Broker. Aye. Vice Mayor Green. Aye. I say aye. Motion passes five to zero. <coughs> now we're down to 15. Motion to approve the settlement agreement in the Laverne versus McDonald's in Yarborough uh, commutation, commutation lawsuit. I make need a, a motion, motion to approve or deny? I make a motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Need a second? Second. Any, any discussion? Now I'm going to do a roll call. Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Alderman Broker? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Motion uh, passes five to zero. Down to number 16, a motion to approve an inter, inter, inter local agreement between the Rufford County, <coughs> excuse me, a correction work center and the city of Laverne. And a motion to approve or to die? Make a motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Need a second? I second. Got a second. Alderman Broker? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Motion passes five to zero. Now we're down to Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman Brown? Um, just want to say congratulations to Kyle. I know that that's a, that's a big position. And, uh, you've certainly done a lot of hard work for us. So I'm looking forward to see what more you do for us in, in the new role that you have. Um, I'd like to also uh, mention again the, the pageant that we had a couple of weekends ago. All the contestants were just simply poised and beautiful and very well behaved children. We had a really good time despite some, <coughs> some barriers that, you know, the weather wasn't cooperating, the mic wasn't cooperating, but we made it work anyway. And um, I'm just really proud of all the families that showed up. Um, so I wanted to say thank you to all of you. Alderman Broker? No, sir. Alderman Brown? I mean, Jones? I'd like to extend it to my husband to tell myself. Vice Mayor Green? I'd like to say I'm happy to have Kyle. He's been with us for a long time and always does a good job. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, working with me tonight. I've, I had a terrible head cold, uh, mouth so dry, can, can, can't hardly stand it, but Kyle, I appreciate you stepping up to the plate. Uh, 
I know you're going to do a great job. Appreciate it. And uh, September is Health Awareness Month. Everybody take care of your health, I guess, this month. <laughs> I know I need to go home and take some, some NyQuil or something. But remember Old Timer's Day, September the 17th? That's two weeks Saturday. It starts off the Country Ham Breakfast at the uh, Rescue Squad from 6 to 9. The parade starts at 10. Lineup is at City Hall. You need to be there by 9 o'clock if you're going to be in the parade. Uh, the, the, the parade ends up at Veterans Memorial Park, where the old time of Philip is at. We've got booths, live entertainment, food, music. We've got a carnival this year, lots of fun for all ages. And again, I want to keep the Cooper and the oil families in our prayers for their loss. And I call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>